I picked up some inexpensive notepads at the local Dollar Tree and utilized one of the notepads to create these three inexpensive pieces of ephemera to use in junk journaling. Journaling pads, notepads, journal inserts, whatever you want to call them. Welcome to my channel. My name is Peg. I call it Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I like to produce journals. You'll see a lot of journal making here on my channel. I use the journals to write in. I'm also getting involved in some encaustic wax. You'll see that here as well, along with a lot of other things I like to do. So if you like eclectic and you like different things all the time, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to let you know when I upload additional content. So the first notebook utilizing the pad is going to be one with printed papers, some magnets, and a few liquid pearls. So these are the pads that I picked up at Dollar Tree. And I couldn't stop adding them into my cart. They were inexpensive and they were different. Some were plain white, some were colored, some were lined. So I have a bunch. Also picked up some pencils. So in the next few weeks, you're going to see me working through these notepads, trying to figure out how I'm going to create something different from each of these pads. So step number one, pad number one, I'm going to remove the front cover, and I'm going to divide this just by eye into three pads of paper. And we'll set those aside to keep them clean. I want to take a quick measurement. They are six inches in length and four inches in width. So we have a four inch by six inch working space. And I don't think you can see that. So let me just right over it with my Sharpie, four inches by six inches. So we have a four inch width, so six inch height. Now I have a bunch of printed paper that I had bought in pads when I first started in this journey. I cut it to six inches in height. This is a 12 inch by 12 inch sheet of paper. I put it on my scoreboard and I started at the middle. So I identified the six inches and from that six inches, I went to eight and scored at eight inches and I scored at eight and a quarter inches. I went the other way and scored at four inches and scored a quarter inch from the four. So the purpose was to keep the by starting in the center, I'm keeping that four inches width in the center of this piece of six inch by 12 inch printed paper. So now we have a spot to rest that notepad. And we have the little quarter inch gussets on each end. So the fold over seems a little too large for me. So I'm taking it to my cutter and I'll just cut a couple inches off. About an inch and a half is what I cut off. And there you have now a pretty decent little fold. I want to take the quarter inch and round my corners with that quarter inch. So now I have the little rounded corners on there. My pad fits in nicely. And I have in that same pad of paper, it has all of these pieces that you can cut out and utilize. And I have chosen to utilize this little girl. I think she looks pretty nice. And we'll insert her here at the top and round her corners as well. Inking it up with some vintage photo ink. 
We'll also do that around the large piece or the six inch height or our cover. I'm going to ink up those quarter inch marks as well. Just giving it a little bit of distressing to look a little more vintage. And now for the tie. So I've chosen this lace ribbon. I'm going to glue the strip along the back of our little girl here. And then place it on the front, make a decision where I want it. I want to make sure I kind of get it centered up. I'm going to hold that in place and put a little bit of glue there to kind of mark where it needs to go. Then I'll turn that over and get my glue onto the back. And now I can easily place that I have decided that I would like to make a magnetic closure out of this. So right to the edge of my closure here, outside the paper, I am gluing my magnet onto the lace and I have cut a second piece of lace to cover the magnet with. So the magnet is encased in lace. And I'll let that dry. And I have inserted that magnet so the um, magnet will attach from the top, meaning the other magnet will stick to it from the top, not the bottom. Now I'm going to wrap that lace around and stick my other magnet on that piece of lace and then I'll fold that lace over and encase that magnet as well. And there, that easy. I have a little magnetic enclosure. Now if you want to find these magnets. I have listed them on my Amazon store, so you'll be able to find them in the storefront, in my Amazon storefront. The link will be in the description below. And there you go. That is that magnetic closure. We have the book glued down inside or the notepad glued down inside. The lace wraps around and closes with a magnetic closure. And of course to finish it off I can't help myself. I have to add some liquid pearls. So I added some drops of liquid pearls, three drops of liquid pearls in the pink color to coordinate with the paper. And that completes notebook number one. Now off to notebook number two, utilizing some leftover gel prints from previous projects. To get started, I am going to cut some cardstock to make the base or the foundation of this second notepad. It is just a typical cardstock in a larger size. I believe this is 13 by 24 sheet of cardstock. So I'm cutting that to six inches right now. That's not going to be the right cut. I want to cut it to the exact width because I'm going vertical in this particular notepad. So. Ultimately, I want to cut that in a four inch width. To score, I am just going to place my notepad down and kind of figure out where I want the top to fold over and where I want the bottom to fold over. And then score it kind of in an appropriate section to give me that six inches of height. So I'll take the piece of cardstock, lay it on my scoreboard, 
and I want to make sure that I score at the top of the six inches and at the bottom of the six inches. And I will put a quarter of an inch gusset on the top and on the bottom. I'm going to trim that down to four inches, which is the width. I trimmed it to four inches. I think you should trim it to four and a quarter or a quarter inch more than the actual width of your piece. That wound up being kind of tricky for me because I had it exact. And now I will denote where the six inch height of my notepad is and score at the top of the six inches and go one quarter inch over and at the bottom of the six inches and go one quarter inch over. That gives me a gusset for the bottom fold and a gusset for the top fold to hold that notepad. See it fits right in here and that little gusset goes over the top and goes over the bottom of the paper. So now we have the foundation for that or this notepad in place. Now to decorate it, I want to cover up these gussets because the gussets are going to show it's not going to be something that's going to be easy to cover with paper. So I want to give them some color and I have chosen to put vintage photo on them at this particular point in time. And I am just inking up the gussets. Now, the reality of the situation is one should choose their paper before they decide what color they're going to stain their gussets. I chose this gold paper that has a lot of black in it. So I think the gussets will look better um, inked and would have looked better inked in black, but I'll fix that a little later. So I have chosen the paper, I've cut it into pieces and I'm placing it um, just gluing it on to the foundation of this notepad holder. And where I didn't have a large enough piece to cover, I just cut it into pieces like this and glued it into place. So I collaged it, if you will, onto the foundation. Once I had the paper laid into place, I went over the edges with the black stays on ink. Now, as I said before, I thought that the gussets would look better in the black, so I am utilizing some black gesso and just painting over those gussets where I had stained them. And again, I will refer back to my statement. It is always pertinent to Pick your paper before you start inking things up and choosing your ink colors. So now I have that corrected in my mind. I have the black gussets. I'll put that gesso away and we'll flip this over and finish with the rest of the collage. You'll also notice here I collage the piece that the notepad is going to lie on. I did that thinking that if there was um, edges that showed, it would be the same color as the outside. However, I fit it so tightly that wasn't necessary. I'll finalize the putting the paper in with the remainder of the scraps I have left over. And I'm just making sure there's no white on the scraps. And this piece that I tore had a uh, quite a bit of white tear line. So I inked that up, decided that ink didn't really cover it well enough. So I pulled out the black gesso and just went along the outside edge of that to give that black definition. We'll glue that into place and now the foundation is completely covered. I 
And I laid that in a wet spot and tore some of that paper. So I will repair that by <clears throat> gluing another little piece on. And there. So that is completely covered. And now for the closure. I have a piece of cardstock that I'm going to pull out, but I have decided that prior to doing that, I will splatter some gold drops from my Art Deco gold pin. And now, pulling out the cardstock and cutting some one-inch circles, I'll glue those circles together. I'm just cutting out <clears throat> quite a few, so I have them in stock there. I'm going to glue those together to give it a little, little more foundation and take my craft pick and just stick a hole right in the center and I will fill that hole with a small brad ink around the outside edge of it. And I'm going to make up two of these, one for the top and one for the bottom. Then we will create a hole in the top and I will line that up and create a hole in the bottom as well. I have glued that ribbon on the back and that glue wasn't completely dry so we'll let that sit for a little bit longer and I'll poke the hole in the bottom and put that bottom brad in. And I have an extra little one inch circle that I shall ink around and I'll place that over the, the prongs of the brad on the back. Now these could have gone in before I put the paper on, but I did not think the paper would be strong enough that's why I chose to put the cardstock circles over the top. I could have put the brads in, put the cardstock circles down, and then put the paper on, and then that would have been uh, clean inside and you wouldn't have seen these little round circles, but I'm okay with doing it like this. I think it gives just a little interest to that inside when you see that little circle. And now I have my ribbon closure. I'm going to cut that ribbon off. And there is how it goes together. Now remember when we pulled apart that notepad, the back or the cardstock was only on the bottom piece. So I've cut an extra piece of cardstock. I actually cut it out of the cover of the printed papers that I used on the first one. And I cut it to the size of a notepad. I'm inking around the outside edge of that so those white, that white will not show. And I will glue the paper directly to this piece of cardstock. And there's my second little notepad. You can see when I flip it over that I cut it out of the cover of the printed papers. I'll glue this into place. And we'll close this up. And I pulled too hard and pulled the glue off. I've pulled it out from the glue, but I don't think that's necessary. We'll just wrap it around the top. Leave a little tail on it, wrap it around the bottom, and then we'll trim that off <clears throat> to an appropriate length. <clears throat> and there you have notebook number two complete. And now for notepad number three. 
When we cut the original 12 inch by 12 inch sheet of paper, it left us a second sheet that was six inches in height and 12 inches in length. And I scored that to hold that notepad for, so I had a centerpiece that was scored at the four inches. Now I am cutting a belly band and you can see how that 12 inch piece will wrap around. That fits nicely. And I want to put the gussets on the side like we did before. So I'll take this piece to my scoring board. I know where I want the center to lie. It's right there at six inches. So I'll go over to eight and score at eight and score at eight and a quarter. I'll go back to four and score and then move over to the left one quarter of an inch and score again. So now I have my gussets in place for the belly band and that fits nicely, but the um, overlap is a little too much. So I want to trim off about an inch and a half of that belly band. So we'll take that back to get a nice straight line to the cutting tool and trim off an inch and a half. We'll bring that back and that fits nicely. So this will create a belly band that will slide up and down or on and off. And I just want to make sure that it is fitting nicely. And I think we have a good fit. And there, see, it'll just slide right over the top and come right off. So let's trim those and ink them up. And I'm inking with a vintage photo. We'll ink around the entire outside edge of this belly band. I'm going to put it back into place. and hit it with a little bit of glue. And we'll let that glue set up and dry. And now to decorate the outside of that, I am going to pull in my wax and we'll put a wax seal on the top. And I've chosen gold. We'll just melt that right onto the paper Hit it with the seal. I'm going to dip that in the water to make sure I don't set my place on fire. And there you go. We have the final three pieces complete. There's one, two, and three. So we have three notepads out of one purchased pad of note paper. So thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate your time and I appreciate you being here. If you would hit me with that uh, subscribe button, I will appreciate it. And I shall say bye for now.